Welcome back. This is Daybreak and thank you for staying with us. The hashtag on X is Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadir. Winnie X is formerly Twitter. <laughs> Thank you. We are now with uh, Montet Chole. She is the founder of Lanley Africa, uh, a company that is women-led, youth-led, and focuses on training of uh, small businesses and uh, young people, connecting them to jobs. I mean, the importance of data in a contemporary society. Thank you for your time, Montet Chole, and uh, coming on the show. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you for having me. In a contemporary society, data is uh, critical, and uh, we have seen it's... Uh, bearing on how societies are progressing, including here mm -hmm. uh, in Kenya, which is ours. Talk to me about your scope of focus in regards to Lanley Africa. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for, for the time. So when it comes to data analytics, what we're trying to do is to help businesses. One of the things that we know is businesses in Kenya, majority of them are SMEs, right? So how do we help teach the fundamentals of data analytics. And when I say fundamentals, yeah. it's basically to understand what is data, what data do you collect on a regular basis. I'll give an example. If you own a supermarket, yeah. right, and you're selling tissues, everything, oil, sugar, everything, right, but you're collecting information once people come to the counter and pay, okay. then over a period of, say, six months, three months, you'll notice that it's similar products being bought. And as a business owner, we are teaching you how do you then read that information and use tools uh, and techniques that will help you to understand that if you sell only this uh, amount of, um, uh, what do you call it, stuff, yeah. that you'll be able to make more money. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's targeting SMEs, entrepreneurs, young people like myself to understand the power of data. And the beauty about it, again, mm -hmm. yeah. is it's universal. What you learn in the Lanley class today about data analytics, yeah. you can be able to apply for a job anywhere, across Africa, across the nation, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we are standing for, and that's why we are very passionate to help people understand what power you have if you understand data. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll talk about the, the, the significance of this, because uh, we are talking about... Uh, literacy general of, of data here, uh, which is uh, within the scope of uh, businesses and individuals. Absolutely. But, but then again, talk to me about how this can address the uh, problem of uh, unemployment and, and as an organization, as a, a company, mm -hmm. do you see yourself as instrumental in the creation of jobs by virtue of just creating that literacy on data, especially amongst the young crop of Kenyans? Absolutely. So the reason why we even selected to choose data analytics to help people get informed is to be able to, um, to remove the barriers. So meaning that you don't have to get a job only in the country mm -hmm. because we do know that a lot of people are struggling to get jobs here. So what else can we train you on that you're able to apply for a job in, say, South Africa, okay. in the States? So absolutely, we are very passionate about making sure that we are teaching on skills that are not only going to help you in the country, but outside the country as well. Mm -hmm. So definitely. And also, we do have an arm yeah. of the business which helps uh, connect tech talent, mm -hmm. and these are young talents, to the corporate worlds. And majority of our clients are, yes, Kenyan, mm -hmm. but we do target clients outside as well. Mm -hmm. And then we connect them to jobs. Mm -hmm. All right. Lanley Africa is woman-led, you here, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, uh, absolutely. For that matter, young Kenyan. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about the contribution and presence of women in uh, technological progress. And, and, and you have seen largely, and, and this, is, this isn't about a government affair, yeah. but uh, this administration has largely been focused on technology. You have seen how it automated systems in terms of payment for government services. But from the women perspective, mm -hmm. are Kenyan women embracing technology and what, has, what is the progress from your observation? Well, I would say if I'm sitting here, then a number of more women are embracing technology. However, I would say that we are still getting um, applications of women who are struggling yeah. Uh, in terms of reaching out, there's a bit of, how do I put it? There's a bit of vastness yeah. and shyness around uh, technology when it comes to women. So in terms of applications, we, we really encourage more women yeah. to apply for such trainings. Um, so yes, there's a bit of a shift in terms of the number of people that we're getting applying for 
technical rules than men. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and given the presence, and oh, oh, largely, I mean, this, uh, the accusations of uh, the Kenyan society being patriarchal. Mm -hmm. What's the response? I mean, this is not a venture that uh, is uh, or comes rather that easy, or uh, there isn't always a smooth takeoff from from the ground. I mean, are there are specific challenges, and what are some of the challenges, for example, women actually um, experience when they venture into such space, space such as technology, for example? That's a really good question. And it's one of the things that we're experiencing right now. It's fantastic to be, you know, a women-led, um, a youth-led organization. But however, the when we have conversations um, in a room, when we talk about uh, funding, for example, <clears throat> um, we still find that women-led organization or like young youth-led, women-led organizations are still really struggling to find funding, you know? Um, and that's why, like, I personally, I find it important that, you know, families, communities to support their women who are venturing into business. It's tough, it's hard, it's competitive, mm -hmm. and yet you will still find that there's biasness again when it comes to the support, the financial bit of yeah. it. So yes, <clears throat> there, there is a bit of challenge there. But then again, like you said, we are seeing um, the needle is moving in the sense that we have now more women even politically. Uh, we have more women in businesses. Yeah. Uh, as much as um, we are not seeing a lot of women coming to Landly just yet when it comes to application of the things that we're offering in data analytics, but we are seeing them um, applying to schools like Jomo Kenyatta University and yeah. joining. Um, so there's a shift happening, but we really need to make a lot of noise as young people, as young women, to talk about what we are passionate about. And because we know that you know, we work hard, mm -hmm. we, we are very intelligent, but then we need the support of a nation, the support of a community, the f support of a family no. as well. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and is that support on the two levels enough or sufficient for that matter, both at the administration level and at the societal level for, for this progress to happen? Because everything seems to be dependent on technology in the contemporary society. And you being in that space, is, mm -hmm. is there support from these both quarters that I've mentioned administratively and also from the society? Um, I think I think there's still a lot to be done. Yeah. Again, like you said, um, we've seen that things are shifting in terms of technology being used from an administration perspective, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that means a lot of more jobs are coming up. So when it comes to support, I would say like, I don't want to say like 100%, but I would say that the needle is moving. It's shifting. There's a shift right now that everyone is acknowledging that technology is here and here to stay. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Um, you remember like when um, Uber, yeah, Bolt yeah, yeah. came into mm -hmm. the country? Yeah, yeah. and everyone was so, you know, um, some people were like, yeah, this is fantastic. Other people were like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Other taxi drivers were really fighting and everything. Is Uber still here and Bolt? And digital taxi services. Yeah. Yeah, yes, they are. They are. <laughs> <laughs> now, talking about uh, um, creating awareness amongst the young people, and, and this is largely within the area and domain of data, there is the problem of unemployment in the country. Mm -hmm. And you have listened to what uh, the government officials are saying, but the private sector seems to be thriving. And for example, the uh, company that you founded, which is women-led and targets the young people in the country. Mm -hmm. do, do you see yourself as a part of the pie in, in addressing the unemployment challenge by virtue of make sure, making sure that you not only create that awareness around data, but also, I mean, rob them into the employment I mean, arena for, to make, I mean, living out of technological, I mean, uh, advancements that the young people can tap into and better their living standards. Absolutely. So what I've seen right now, and I don't know if you've been able to see this, is there's a big promotion on gig economy, right? So the gig economy is basically trying to support uh, the partnership between Kenya and other countries mm -hmm. and creating policies that allow uh, young Kenyans to be able to get jobs outside, but still sitting in this country. You don't have to relocate now. You know, technology has been able to advance hybrid right now, this hybrid, there are people working from home yeah. and everything. So that has shifted as well. So definitely, the thing that we're doing at Lanley uh, when it comes to that regard is as much as uh, we try and connect you with tech jobs, mm -hmm. we also take initiatives such as mm -hmm. training these young people when it comes to CV writing, you know, the softer skills, yeah. CV mm -hmm. writing, how do you look for a job? How do you search for a job? What 
what do you need to do to be able to present yourself that you're competitive? Mm -hmm. So yes. Should there be awareness again on the flip end around security for that matter? I mean, is that also an area that you focus on? Because uh, for example, as you have mentioned, you cannot necessarily share your data. It's, it's very critical. Yeah. Is, is there awareness around security? Yes, so data privacy is what you're asking. Yeah. Yes, so part of teaching the fundamentals is ensuring that people understand that nowadays you just can't share people's information out there. So we help them in terms of, when we talk about fundamentals of data analytics, the tools, the techniques that we're doing is to help you to understand what data privacy is. Because sometimes you're, you're given big words like data privacy, mm -hmm. but do you even really understand what that means? Yeah. So it's just making sure that we explain it in a way that people can really truly understand. Mm -hmm. And that's why our curriculum is focusing on case studies, um, what has worked before, and that's why we want a range of people. You can be employed, yeah. you can be an uh, entrepreneur, you can be a young people who just left university, and you can join this program mm -hmm. and be able to understand where the world is moving when it mm -hmm. comes to data. Are you futuristic in the foreseeable future? And, and this is the final question. Okay. On, you have talked about being employed. Yeah. And now the people who you are empowering in terms of data analysis and understanding, them employing others as well Absolutely. to address the societal problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, just repeat your question again, sorry. Are you looking forward to then in the future or yeah. in the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. not only seeking to empower mm -hmm. young people to get employed and to get employed, but also them employing others as well going forward. Absolutely, yeah. and that's why I mentioned, for this course, it's not necessarily for just employed people, it's also for entrepreneurs. Because you can imagine, you're an entrepreneur, if we help you like build your business, then we help you to make enough money to build your company in terms of getting more people jobs. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, that's, um, you know, that's our hope, that's our dream, to get more young people to be um, empowered, mm -hmm. either employed yeah. or, as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a, a very extensive field and uh, array of, of course, other developments that uh, uh, today in the contemporary society depend on technology. Monte Chule, thank you for your time. Thank much you so much. appreciated. I appreciate and, and for coming on the broadcast. She is the founder of Lanley Africa, which is uh, uh, women-led and focuses on the empowerment of young Kenyans and Africans in understanding data for their progress and in the end, of course, uh, lifting them from the depths of despair to the great heights of hope in terms of not only advancement, but also the creation of employment for them. The hashtag on Twitter is X. The SMS code is double two four double two at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikade, also at Safin underscore Cheng. Thanks for waking up with us here on the broadcast. We'll see you here at the same time on Friday morning.